Okay, these are a few practice problems using properties of exponents. So let's remember what we said. We said when you work with exponents, sometimes you add, sometimes you subtract, sometimes you multiply, sometimes you distribute, and sometimes you don't. So we've got to remember all of those rules. And the rule is we add exponents anytime we're multiplying, and the bases are the same. So number five on this homework property that said exponent laws, number five, we're going to think of this negative as being a negative one times x squared times two times x. We're multiplying one, two, three, four things. So we're going to multiply the things that make sense to multiply, like a negative one times two. Negative times a positive, one negative sign. What kind of answer do I get? Negative two. Yes. So negative two. And then I got to worry about x squared times x. If you think about it, I got two x's multiplied here and one more x here. All I got to do is add two plus an understood one to get negative two times x to the third. I don't really have to write the dot between them. It's okay if I do. Negative two x to the third. We added exponents. Number eight. Oh, it looks a little scarier, right? Let's reorganize it because, because we're multiplying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different factors. So we're, we know we're going to multiply all of the numbers. How many negative signs do we see? Three. So the answer is going to be? Negative. You got it. And so we're going to think negative three times negative four times negative four. We're going to put all the numbers together and we know the answer is negative. Let's go ahead and do that. 3 times 4 is 12. What's 12 times 4? 48. Yes. 12 times 4 is 48. So we've got negative 48 when we multiply the numbers. Then we've got to multiply all of the x's because they're like bases. So we've got to multiply an x and an x to the fourth and an x to the third. And there's an understood 1 right here. So that means add the exponents. I've got three bases that are the same, so I'm going to add 1 plus 4 plus 3, what do I get? 8. Yes, good. x to the 8. And then we're going to have to multiply the y's. So we're going to have to multiply y squared times y to the third. And so we've got two bases that are the same. If we think about this, it means two y's multiplied and three y's multiplied. And we don't want to have to write all of that out, so we just add 2 plus 3. It's fine. y to the fifth. Did you get that one? Good. On number 15, we have a different rule. This time we don't have two bases that are the same. We have two different bases. But we have factors inside of the parentheses. Remember, factors are multiplied. Terms are separated by a plus or a minus. So these are factors. That means we distribute. This exponent goes to each one of these. Now, before we distribute, there's one more thing we've got to take in, in account. There's a negative in front. So let's rewrite this problem to start with and think of it as negative 1 times x to the third times y to the third, all to the third. So then really, that means this exponent of 3 is going to go to the negative 1 and also x to the third and also to y to the third. And remember this, remember what we said? If there's a negative number, in I mean, uh, raised to a power, we've got to put it in parentheses. So that means we'll have negative 1 to the third, and then x to the third, to the third, and then y to the third, to the third. Every factor got the power. So tell me this, negative 1 to the third. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1. Yes. That's negative 1. And then what's the rule when we have one base, not two, one base to a power and then another power? Multiply. You multiply, good. So that makes this x to the? Nine. Yes. And y to the? Nine. Okay. Did you get that one? Yes. Good. On 21, we have 4xy over 3yx to the third. When we do very, we're going to write these alphabetically. So I might change this from the very beginning and realize, oh, I'm going to keep going down. I'm going to realize that 
This says four divided by three. I don't ever subtract numbers, okay? I only subtract exponents when I'm dividing. So I, there's not a whole lot I can do with four divided by three if I don't want to get a decimal. I'm just going to leave it as four thirds. And then I'm going to kind of rearrange this because I'm going to think of x is going to divide by the x to the third. And y on top is going to divide with the y on bottom. And what's anything over itself? Zero. No, it's y one. divided by y is one. one. Anything over itself is one. So, or I could think of, I don't know what you're thinking when you said zero. You're thinking subtract one minus one, y to the zero, but what's any number to the zero power? One. It's going to just turn into one. Or those cancel out, those are gone. So, I'm going to keep four over three, and then I'm going to think, I got one x on top and, and three x's on bottom. I'm going to subtract the exponents and I'm going to think x to the one minus three. What's that give me? One mm -hmm. minus three. Negative two. Mm -hmm. So I've got four over three, x to the negative two, but we don't leave x to the negative two. We've got to rewrite it. Remember x to the negative two? How, what do we do with it? Um, one x to one over x, x to the positive two. Okay, so I'm going back up with this. Now I have four thirds times, instead of x to the negative two, one over x to the positive two. Now to multiply fractions, we go straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So we end with four on the top three x squared. and three x squared on the bottom. On number 23, there's a negative on the bottom. Really, I have a positive divided by a negative. There's only one negative sign. So the answer is going to be negative. Now, here's the deal. When you're working with fractions, it doesn't matter if you put that negative sign on the top or on the bottom or out in front of it all. It means the same thing. So I know I've got a negative 3 over 2. And then I have an x on top. Then I'm going to divide with an x to the third on bottom. And then there's just a y, and there's no y on the bottom. There's an understood 1 right here. So I'm going to keep negative 3 over 2. And I'm going to subtract 1 minus 3. If I have x to the 1 minus 3, and I'm doing nothing with the y's, 1 minus 3 is negative, negative two. 2. So I've got negative 3 over 2. And then x to the negative 2 and y. But I can't leave x to the negative 2. So that makes it negative 3 over 2 times, what do we do with x to the negative 2? It becomes 1, one over x, x to the positive 2. So times 1 over x squared times y. Or y over 1, because that y was really on the top of the fraction, so there's an understood 1 underneath it. So now, if we go straight across the top, I got a negative 3 on top and a 2 on bottom. What do I have? Straight across the top? 3 y. With a negative? Negative 3 And y. then on, so that makes it negative 3 y. And on bottom, 2 times x squared times 1. 2 x squared. So that's 2 x squared. On number 25. If I'm just looking at numbers and I go, oh, I got a negative 4 on the bottom, I can always do this. There is an understood 1 in front of that y to the 4th. So the number that I have, don't subtract 1 minus negative 4. We're just dividing. So that's really, I can't do much with that other than to say I've got negative 1 fourth. And then, um, x squared is on the bottom. So I'm going to keep up with the fact that I got an x squared on the bottom. Y'all give me just a second and then I'll, I'll get it. And then I'm also going to keep up with the fact when I do work with the y's, I got a y to the fourth on top and a y to the fourth on bottom. So 4 minus 4 zero. is 0. y to the 0, what's anything to the 0 power? 1. one. So these cancel. 
or I can know that if I subtract exponents, I get y to the 0, and that just turns into 1. So really, all I have left is negative 1 on top. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. And on bottom, 4x squared. There you go. Good. we got a couple more. And then I'll look and see what y'all have. On 28, the number... It's a positive divided by a negative. One negative sign. Odd number of negatives means it's negative. So I'm going to have a negative 3 over 2. And then I've got to subtract these. I'm going to have to think of this as y to the 2 minus 4. But what's 2 minus 4? Negative 2. So we've got negative 3 over 2 times y to the negative 2. But we can't leave a negative exponent. So we rewrite this. We have negative 3 over 2 to multiply by 1 over what? 1 over y to the positive 2. And now we're ready to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So we get negative 3 2 y squared. Did you get that one? Yes. Good. Okay. On this last one. We could do the same thing that we've done before. This negative is like an understood negative 1. So I have a positive 3 divided by a negative 1. One negative sign. Odd number of negatives makes it negative. So we got negative 3 over 1. And then we got an x to the second on top and an x to the fourth on bottom. So we're going to think x to the 2 minus 4. And then there's a y to the fourth on top and nothing on the bottom. So we're going to keep y to the fourth. Negative 3 divided by 1, this is just negative 3, right? Yeah. 2 minus 4. Negative 2. Mm -hmm. X to the negative 2. And Y to the positive 4. Can I leave that answer? I can't leave it because it's got a negative exponent. So anytime you see a negative exponent, not a negative number, but this negative number doesn't become 1 over. I leave the negative number, but the negative exponent I replace with 1 over x squared. And y to the fourth was on top, so to make sure I know it's on top, I'm going to put over 1. And I'm going to go ahead and put 3 over 1. So I know that to go straight across the top, what do I have? Negative 3, 1. And on the bottom, 1 times x squared times 1 is just x squared. Does that help a little bit? Yes. Can we stop that?